welcome back to Cabin Fever Crochet for part two of our Cal Crochet Along of my Lunar Dreams Curved Half Moon Shawl. And I'm going to briefly go over a couple of things, a couple of reminders here with a little bit more info, and then we will get started. And you're going to see me looking down because I have notes. It has been a really long day. I'm not even going to try to attempt to remember at this hour, but I wanted to get it up so we can get moving along. All right, so we're going to have a total of three part in this crochet along series. And this part two, it's about two thirds of the tutorial. And this gets us started with our setup rows and then what develops into our repeat pattern. And then part three will be much shorter and it's also gonna move along a lot more quickly. And as a reminder, if you haven't already, I encourage you to please go back and watch part one because um, most importantly, the layout of our five stitch marker placement and also the supply section too. And then to remind you to uh, go up, I suggest one to two or more hook sizes depending on your tension. And as an example, for the sample in this shawl that I started, and I inserted a clip on part one. Now I have worked up about half of it so far. This is in a sport weight yarn, 300 yards per your standard, three and a half ounce, 100 grams, and I used a five millimeter H hook. In the sample I did, I had started with an I 5.5 millimeter, but I was a little concerned that by the time this was all said and done and the weight of the yarn and when I blocked it, it might be a little bit too open and lacy, but that is going to be up to you, you know, your call, your taste. Okay, so then part three will be up in a couple of few days, depending on how long it, it takes <laughs> the internet to upload here, which is pretty slow. And then uh, lastly, another reminder is, if you don't already know, I have a written pattern for this, which is the link below for that is in my Etsy shop. And um, also, yes, the link for part one is also in the drop down description box. And I'm going to put that in the comment section too with a timestamp to take you to this portion that covers the layout of those five stitch markers. Okay, so I think that about covers it, all right? And now we're going to play and have some fun. And now my fiber friends, it's time to create. And I also have a timestamp reference guide for this whole part two, broken down step by step in the same description section so you can refer back to that for any segment at any time. Now we're going to begin row one. The right side rows are always on an odd numbered row, one, three, five, seven, nine, okay? Wrong side, even numbered rows. So if you need to keep track of that too, you are welcome to do that. Now I'm going to start with a magic circle because I really like the nice finished straight edge on this going down the center back. I think it looks really clean and nice, no lumps or bumps there. If you're not comfortable with the magic circle, then you can chain four, slip stitch to the beginning, chain to form a ring, and then just work within that circle. Now how, how I do my magic circle is I place the tail end over the palm facing me, take my working long end attached to the ball, I wrap around my two fingers, cross over, and make an X, okay? And then I take my hook, go up underneath the tail end, all right? Grab my working end, pull up a loop, and then I pinch all that off with my fingers. Just get a little bit of control over it, cinch down my circle if it became too big. Okay, and then now I'm going to chain three and keep those chains full sized stitches because at the beginning here and throughout, the beginning chain three does count as your first double crochet. And now we are going to make six more double crochets into the ring. 
for a total of seven double crochets including the beginning chain three. I keep slipping off the hook. Okay, double check. Make sure you have seven total. Okay, good. And then gently close your circle. I don't over tight or cinch that down snug until after I finish my second row just to be sure that my beginning stitches do not get over tightened. Okay, so now onward to a row two wrong side okay so now row two we're going to now chain four so the first chain three is our double crochet and the fourth is a chain one space of the v-stitch we are going to make turn your work and then all you do is double crochet right back into that first double crochet and there is your first v-stitch chain three is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. All right. Now we're going to skip the next double crochet and we will v-stitch into the next. Going through both loops, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Those are our v-stitches. All right, and then now we are at our fourth double crochet starting from the beginning chain three and that is our center point so we will mark this after we make our next stitch and then with the one that one blue stitch marker that I had to mark that center and then I'd like you to carry up the center with each following row thereafter so in the center we are going to work a v-stitch increase. So first you make a regular v-stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. All right, so there's one v-stitch. Now you chain one again and work one more double crochet all into that center double crochet. So here's one v-stitch here's the other and you have your center point of your double crochet and that is where I would like you to place one stitch marker to start okay and now we are going to mirror do the same as we worked the first side of our center we're going to work the other side now with one regular V stitch in the next stitch double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next double crochet and in the last, which is a third chain up from the bottom, the top of our turning chain, work a v-stitch. So insert through both top loops of the chain, double crochet, chain one, double crochet all in to that same <clears throat> turning chain okay so now at the end of row two you should have six V stitches <coughs> which are made up of 11 double crochets and six chain one spaces and when you count don't accidentally count the space in between the V stitches or work into them as you are working forward because that's an easy mistake for me anyway alright so here's one V stitch two here we're at the center three four five and six okay and that is the end of row two I just closed the blind a little bit the sun was streaming through as you could see and even though it felt so good I didn't want it to be a distraction for you. All right, so now back, we'll be working back on the right side, moving on to row three. We'll be working some regular V-stitches and V-stitch increases. 
Alright, so now we're going to chain four again, which is our double crochet and chain one and we are going to work a v-stitch increase in this first v-stitch and you just double crochet into the v-stitch this time not the double crochet at the end but in all right so double crochet there's one v-stitch and as we did before in the center we're going to do that on the ends now chain one and double crochet back into the same beginning v-stitch for our first v-stitch increase. Now we are going to work another v-stitch increase into the next v-stitch. You double crochet, chain one, double crochet all into that v-stitch, chain one and double crochet again and now we're coming up to the center so we will v-stitch in that v-stitch to the right of the center double crochet just a regular double crochet chain one double crochet and now we're going to v-stitch into that center double crochet of the v-stitch work right into the double crochet with one double crochet, chain one double crochet. All right, and then take your stitch marker and now place it into that chain one space just right through the center of that V stitch, right through the middle of the center V stitch. Okay, <laughs> and then here's the V stitch directly next to the center. All right. Don't accidentally like, skip over here. So now just v-stitch into that next v-stitch. Okay, and just like we did on this other side, next to that we have a v-stitch increase into the next, very next v-stitch. All right, so double crochet, chain one, double crochet and to increase again you chain one and one more double crochet and we are going to place a v-stitch increase in to the last so we have one at the beginning but to do this at the end how we work it is you v-stitch into the last v-stitch all right and now we're going to chain one and put the last double crochet into the top of your chain three. So if, if you noticed, and I'm just because I've made you know several couple already and working on another that um, I just slid my V stitch over just a little bit to get that out of the way. Don't accidentally work into the top of your chain four because that counts as a chain one for this entire stitch and it's going to make that edge too short if you do. So make sure you're going up one, two, three stitches and double crocheting into that to complete your v-stitch increase and make sure when you bring up a loop making that stitch do it nice and tall like a full double crochet so the edge of your work does not pull down and you get a nice edge going across and do that with every stitch I mean every stitch on each end as you come around back and forth and now I, I've forgotten but I'm just going to go ahead now and cinch up my beginning slip stitch not too tight oh, not that down too low but there you go you know for a nice edge okay now let's see this was the end of row three okay so at the end of row three you should have 11 V stitches and 11 chain one spaces within those V stitches all right 11 V stitches end of round three all right now for round I say round row row four back and forth on the rows okay so now this is an all double crochet row 
All right, so we are working, we'll be working on the wrong side now. So chain three and turn that chain three again to your first double crochet and into this first V stitch, work three double crochets. three double crochets in the next V-stitch two double crochets in each of the next two V-stitches okay, there's one and one two there's two, all right. Now we're back to the center. Okay. Right, there we go. <laughs> so we worked three V stitches going across that center in the previous row. We have the center V stitch that we worked in that double crochet and then one V stitch on each side. We are going to work three double crochets in each of these three V stitches. Okay, And then when you get to the center mark the middle double crochet in that group of three that goes into the center V stitch. Alright, so here we go. First V stitch, three double crochets Here we are in the center V stitch. Three more double crochets. Do you ever make a little pile of yarn for yourself and it's all nice and neat and then you go to grab it and somehow it just like magically tangles upon itself? I don't know how that happens. You see how I marked my middle double crochet in that center group of three of the center V stitch. Okay, and then now three double crochet in the next. So you have three sets of three double crochets. And then now two double crochets in each of the next two V stitches, just like we did on the other side. Okay, there's two. And then you have two more V stitches. Now we're going to work three double crochets in the next. Three double crochets in the last V stitch. And then one double crochet in the top of your chain three. You're turning chain three. Okay. At the end of row four, you should have 31 double crochets. Okay. And now beginning with row five, this begins our shell rows, which consists of cluster stitches, chain ones, and single crochets. Okay, so you're going to chain one, okay, and make again as you've done your other chains. Don't cinch that down tighter. It's going to draw in uh, your work along the edge here. Okay, so give a nice full size chain, turn, single crochet into that beginning double crochet, skip two, we're going to work a shell on the next and the shell are three clusters with two chains and each cluster is a two double crochet cluster. Alright, so we skip two and don't worry you, you will just get your rhythm flowing and going and just breeze right along once you do uh, some of these. Okay, so skip the next two cluster shell in the next. So you yarn over 
insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two and make sure again those loops when you yarn over are nice and tall to the height of a regular double crochet. Alright, so leave those two loops on your hook, yarn over again, insert your hook back into that same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two, and now yarn over, pull through all three, and that is a two double crochet cluster. Alright, so that's one of them. Now chain one, and we'll repeat, repeat two more clusters, but no chain one at the end. Okay, so yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up another loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, chain one. Now we're going to do one more cluster, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through three. So you have three two double crochet clusters with a chain one space on either side of the center. And now we're going to skip the next two and single crochet in the next, which locks this shell in, locks that cluster in, and it gives that kind of neat half wagon wheel scallop shape too with some very pretty texture. That's our repeat all the way across. Okay, so now we're going to do another shell. You skip two, shell in the next. There's one, chain one. There's two, chain one, and one more cluster for the last part of our shell and then now again skip two, single crochet. So you skip two shell, skip two, single crochet, skip two shell in the next, skip two, single crochet in the next. So now we skip the next two that takes us right up to our center double crochet, all right, and work a shell. There's cluster one, chain one, cluster two, chain one, the last cluster, no chain afterwards, skip the next two, single crochet in the next. And that is your sequence repeat all the way to the end. I will meet you down at the end, work that together take your stitch marker and then now remember I said with the increase in the center we're going to be doing something a little bit differently so place your center stitch marker through the top of your center cluster it's that elongated stitch that goes right across your entire cluster stitch marker goes there okay so I will meet you at the end. I've finished my last cluster, no chain, so I skip the next two double crochets. That leaves me my chain three and just single crochet in the top of your turning chain three. Okay, Make a nice full stitch. Okay, so this is at the end of row five on the right side here with our pretty shells and you should have five shells two on each side of the center shells in the center okay so that gives you five shells six single crochets and ten chain one spaces two in each of the shells so however many shells that you have, you should have double that number for your chain one spaces to correspond with the two in each. And now moving on to row six, wrong side again, we are going to be working all V-stitches, chains, and single crochets on this one. Alright, so we're going to start with 
a regular V-stitch, chain four. Okay, so there's our double crochet and chain one, and now turn, and then double crochet into your beginning single crochet. And now you chain two, and jump over to your shell in those chain one spaces on either side of the center. That's what we'll be working in. And a single crochet in the first chain one space of the shell, chain two, single crochet in the second chain one space of the shell. Now chain two again, and it's time to V-stitch into the single crochet that is in between the two shells. And because it's a little offset, anchored down from the shell on the previous row, okay, don't accidentally work into the top of the cluster. Okay, so V stitch into the shell in between the two clusters, and that's our repeat. We chain two single crochet in the first chain one space of the next shell, chain two, single crochet in the second chain one space of the shell, chain two, v-stitch in that single crochet by itself in between the two shells, and then repeat. Alright, and I'm going to show you what we do, and this is what you work all the way up one side until you get to your center shell with the stitch marker. And what you do here is you begin with the chain two right after your last V stitch, and then you go ahead and you single crochet into that first chain one space of the shell, but now working just over these next two stitches, you're going to only chain one in between. All right, so you chain one, now, take your stitch marker out and single crochet into the top of that cluster where your stitch marker was. All right, chain one again and single crochet into the second chain one space of the shell, which is really butts up right next to the cluster since we worked in the top of it, not all the way over here. Okay, so don't accidentally skip this chain one space. Alright, so now you have three single crochets going across the center, stitch marker into that middle single crochet of the three, and now we go back into chaining two again and mirroring the other side. Just doing what you did on the other side with a V-stitch into that single crochet by itself, chain two, one single crochet in the first chain one space of the shell, chain two, single crochet in that second space of the shell, chain two, V-stitch in the single crochet in between the two shells, and you just repeat across the other side, the chain two in between, the only time you do chain one is across that top center, and then you repeat that sequence all the way to the other end, chain two, and you V-stitch, one V-stitch in the top of your last single crochet. Alright, so that's the end of row six. And at the end of row six, you should have six V stitches and eleven single crochets. Row seven, that is an all V stitch row with the V stitch increases. And now you will need your stitch markers. Okay, chain four. And we are going to work a V stitch increase by double crocheting into the first V stitch, 
chaining one and double crocheting again all into that same beginning V stitch. Now you are going to place one V stitch in each of the next two single crochets. Okay, and so you know we will be working our V stitch increases into V stitches only, never into the single crochets. Single crochets will always get a regular V stitch except with one exception of our center. Okay. Alright, so we worked one V stitch in each of the next two and now we are going to work a V stitch increase in the next V stitch. V stitch, chain one, double crochet, take one of your stitch markers and just place that around the center double crochet of your V stitch increase. And now we're going to place again one V stitch in each of the next two single crochets. another V stitch increase into the next V stitch. Okay. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Get your second stitch marker, place that around the middle double crochet of the second increase. Now here is where our piece will start to take shape and develop from what I had mentioned at the beginning when I showed you the uh, placement and shape of the stitch markers that we have one in the center and we will have two increases on either side in between the center and the increase at the end. So this is where we are beginning with that portion of it. Alright, so now for the center, we are going to place a regular V stitch in the next, which is the first single crochet in the set of three from the center. Okay, there's the shell. Alright, so V stitch into the first single crochet and then now V stitch increase into the center single crochet. There's the V stitch, chain one double crochet and as we did on the stitch markers with the increases along the side. We're going to take one stitch marker and do the same. Place it around that center double crochet of the increase we just made and make sure, remember your last, your third in the set of three single crochet. So now we just mirror what we did on the other side. We are going to V-stitch in that last single crochet of the center and now V stitch increase in the next V stitch. Place your third stitch marker there. Okay. So when I say third, yeah, and I'm just working with the five, not including if you're using an extra on either end. I'm just counting from this portion up. Okay. Alright, so now one V stitch in each of the next two single crochets. One V stitch increase in the next and that's where your fifth stitch marker will go. Okay. 
one v-stitch in each of the next two single crochets. And one v-stitch increase in the last, done how we have before with a v-stitch in that last v-stitch. Okay, and you chain one and double crochet in the third chain up. So make sure you're counting, and again like I did before you can slide this over a little bit just to give you more room. But another reminder, don't accidentally miss the bottom chain and chain in that fourth chain up. Because then you are doing a decrease by eliminating your chain one space. Alright, so that's one, two, three. Because you can see that uh, the one chain at the base can tend to shrink down a little smaller than the rest. So one, two, three, third chain up, double crochet. So this is the end of row 7, and you should have 24 v-stitches at the end of this row, which equals 41 double crochets. So what we are doing now from this point forward is each v-stitch increase row, this winds up increasing our v-stitches overall by 12, and we will be adding increasing two shells on each side of our work for a total of four shells per sequence, the sequence being the four row repeat. So as you can see from that, you know, that's growing your work quite a bit. Well folks, I think this is a really good place for us to take a little break and here on part two, and I'll be back in just a couple of days or so with part three, the grand finale, where we'll pick back up, finish rows eight and nine, and then go over our four row repeat recapping for rows 10 through 13, where we'll really find our rhythm and the work will start flowing and going a lot faster. And then I'll show you how to work the finishing edging, the lovely and easy scallop shell border which is very similar to what we have been doing with just a little addition to add more fullness and drape. So I'm excited. I look forward to seeing you soon and until then take good care. All right bye for now.